Hello, I'm Russell and welcome to the Onduline Technical Department. The main aim of this short video is to guide you step by step through the fixing process for Onduline roofing sheet. We're going to use this timber shed to demonstrate how to fix Onduline to your roof. Should you have more complex roofing details such as valleys, verges or wall abutments, then we've produced a secondary video which will enable you to scroll down to the information matching your exact project requirements. There's also a fully comprehensive fixing guide that you can download from our website. The first job is to inspect the building. So in this case, we have a timber frame shed. It's in good condition, but you should check that there are no signs of deterioration on yours. It really is worth spending a little time renovating it before you start on the roof. Pay particular attention to the way the roof section is constructed. In this case, it's made of 12 mm tongue and groove boarded decking supported on timber trusses. But yours may be made from plywood or OSB like this. The main issue is to ensure that the thickness of the decking is sufficient to support nail penetration of between 15 to 20 mm. Otherwise, you will need to overlay the roof with battens. You're going to need the following tools to do the job. A hammer, snips, knife, tape measure, a coarse bladed hand saw with some lubricating oil to ensure that it doesn't bind whilst cutting. Of course, we'd always recommend using a circular saw for ease of cutting, but we'll come to that later on in the video. You should always ensure that you wear safety gloves, goggles, and of course, a safety hat. Finally, please remember that working on roofs is hazardous. Always ensure that you're working from a secure platform or ladder. The next step is to measure the shed. Remember the golden rule of building. Always measure twice, so you only fix the job once. I'm gonna ask Richard, our instructor, to show us how to do this. Richard is going to measure the slope of the roof using an inclinometer. With this information, we can select the correct fixing specification. Next, Richard is gonna measure the length and the width of the shed. The width along what is known as the verge, and the length along what is known as the eaves. With these measurements, we can then calculate the materials required. The first step is to determine the slope of your roof. Then, select the corresponding fixing requirement from one of these three options. For roofs with a slope of 15 degrees or steeper, the sheets must be supported on purlin set at a maximum distance of 61 centimetres apart. The sheet can then be fixed just select the appropriate onduline fixing that matches your requirements and fit in accordance with the instructions. The sheets are laid with a 17 cm end lap and a single corrugation side lap. For roofs with a slope between 10 degrees to 15 degrees, the sheets must be supported on purlin set at a maximum distance of 45 cm apart. The sheet can then be fixed just select the appropriate onduline fixing that matches your requirements and fit in accordance with the instructions. The sheets are then laid with a 20 cm end lap and a single corrugation side lap. For roofs with a slope of between 5 to 10 degrees, the sheets must be supported on a roof deck. The sheet can then be fixed. Just select the appropriate onduline fixing that matches your requirements and fit in accordance with the instructions. The sheets are then laid with a 30 cm end lap and a double corrugation side lap. It is essential you select the correct fixing option to create a durable, long-lasting roof covering. Anyway, enough of the theory, let's get back to our shed. We know it has a boarded roof slope of 25 degrees and because it is only 12 mm thick, we must overlay the deck with purlins that are fixed at 61 cm apart. Carefully mark out and screw the purlins into the shed's existing roof support structure. On thin decked roofs, in order to avoid any risk of the fixings penetrating the interior of the building, first secure the purlins at the verges externally. Then mark out and screw through the deck into the purlins from inside the building. Next, we must fix the ridge purlings in place. Their location is dependent on the roof slope, so use a ridge piece to establish their exact position.
An inexpensive option to upgrade the thermal performance of your building is to place insulation boards between the purlins, having first laid an onditis membrane onto the decking. Please note that for the purpose of clarity, we are not using underlay in this video. Cut the sheets as required and select the appropriate onduline fixing to be used for your project. Details on cutting the sheets and the full onduline fixing range can be found on the Trade Secrets video. Allow a sheet overhang of 5 cm at the eaves. After ensuring that the sheet is positioned square to the line of the eaves and the verge, nail the sheet into place. In this case, we are using onduline safe top nails. At the verge, the sheet corrugation overhangs the barge board by 5mm to form a drip edge. The sheet can now be secured by nailing each corrugation at the eaves and sheet end laps, then either side of the vertical laps and every other corrugation on the intermediate purlins. For enhanced weathering performance you can of course use onduline preformed verge pieces. To fix the ridge, first mark out the ridge line on the sheets. Next, align the ridge pieces on the sheets and fix onto the roof, using the preformed end lap grooves on the ridge to define the lap. You can improve the aesthetic of the ridge line on the roof if you trim the edges of the lower lapped ridge piece. The ridges are then secured by nailing every other corrugation. To complete the roof, cut and fix a timber finial to seal the ridge. We hope that during the course of this short video, we've been able to show you just how easy it is to fit your own long-lasting durable roof. If you have any additional questions, please contact our technical team. They'll be more than happy to help you.